Hi, and welcome to my channel. In today's video, I'm gonna be taking you through how much money does it actually take to get started on Amazon FBA? Okay, so how much money do you need to get started selling on Amazon FBA? As you can appreciate, there's lots and lots of variables. Uh, I've broken it down into eight key points Six of them I would say you have to have. Two of them are optional, but most definitely highly recommended. So let's get to them. Okay, so product research tool. Cost of the product in shipping to get it from China, typically it's coming from China, into the Amazon warehouse ready for them to distribute when a, an order is placed. The Amazon seller central account there's two options on that i'll go through each one of these on a separate slide the logo if you're private labeling you're going to need a logo and a brand name to put onto the product the barcode the upc code which is the unique identifier so when it goes into the amazon warehouse when somebody places an order for your product you know their machines or people can go off find your individual product to get that sent out the photography on all of my products with exception for the last one I've always used a professional photographer the last one I didn't I got a, a light box because it was a much smaller product and I was able to take the pictures myself uh, an inspection of the products whilst they're still in China so they're manufactured your manufacturer will tell you hey we've made them all they're ready to go the last thing that you want is them arriving in the US in the Amazon warehouses and there being something wrong with them and then you get returns and it just creates a whole bunch of other problems for you so I highly recommend although this is not mandatory I highly recommend you get that done whilst it's still in China or wherever your manufacturer may happen to be make sure that the inspection company is an independent inspection company and they basically just go in there's various different options on that but they will go in check over the products make sure that there's nothing wrong with them before your manufacturer sends them on to you and then pay-per-click ppc uh, amazon advertising uh, again it's not mandatory but i would highly recommend it particularly in the first month or two uh, whilst you're trying to get your product up off the ground you know you're going from completely unknown uh, breaking into a market if you've done your product research correctly you shouldn't be going up against too many competitors but you still need some help getting it up off the ground so let's go through these first and I would say probably most important is your product research tool obviously you want to find a product which is high in demand and low in competition and can make you the most amount of money per sale in an ideal world. For this, I use three tools. Two of them I'm gonna cover here just because they're provided by the same company, and that company is called Jungle Scout. Two tools, the first is a Chrome extension. That's a one-time payment for that, which I will show you on the next slide. And then the second, provided by the same company, but it does slightly different things, is the web app, and that's a $29 a month monthly payment ongoing monthly payment but obviously you can cancel at any time so the first one is when you're on the Amazon page as if you were shopping as a consumer you can pull up a tool and I'll go live with this in a minute I just wanted to show you a, a static image just for now you can pull up a tool of all the products that are for sale so here I searched on uh, Apple iPhone case I think it was Apple iPhone 10 case and then it shows you all the uh, the top sellers uh, the price that each item is being sold for obviously the category <clears throat> the rank of the individual seller how many monthly sales they're making how much they're making in sales per month which you know as you can see some of them are making you know good money this this one here is making $135,000 a month selling a $13.25 product they're just selling a lot of them and then some other things which are 
probably not as important. The reviews would be, I mean, this one has got low reviews. Typically, the lower the reviews, the lower the competition. Uh, you don't want to be going in against somebody that's got, you know, five, five thousand, ten thousand reviews. You know, they're they're already established, and you really don't want to go up against them. The star rating doesn't matter quite so much, but when you get a little bit deeper into the product research, it can influence things. Amazon FBA. This is quite an important one. You want to see what type of seller it is because. Obviously, with Amazon FBA, those products are all getting the standard uh, Prime two-day shipping. So with that, you want to make sure that if you're going to be competing against people, that there's not too many other Amazon FBA sellers. You want to have, ideally, something over your competition. So there may be competitors out there that are selling a product that aren't Amazon FBA and therefore they're not offering the buyers the two-day shipping. So if you can go in there with similar priced um, product but you're offering them the free two-day shipping they're typically going to go for you. The fees so on the $13.25 sale these people are paying uh, $4.98 in fees to Amazon and they're taking away the $8.00 and 27 so obviously out of that eight dollars and 27 cents they're also buying the phone case <clears throat> but something like this they're probably not paying more than a dollar you know so they're 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 pretty profitable um, and obviously with the volume of sales they're doing ten thousand a month uh, you know they're they're walking away with a good chunk of change each month so with this I'm just gonna switch to a live version of this just to show you here so as you can see I'll just close this down here Apple iPhone X case and these are all the people all the top sellers that are selling it so the tool uh, or the first tool that I mentioned is the Jungle Scout Chrome extension and as you can see I click on it and it starts pulling in all of this information from this Amazon page from all the individual sellers and that's where it then starts pulling in all of this information that I showed you earlier and you can sort it any way you want you know from product price rank I typically tend to search with uh, revenue fees just try and break it down in different ways because something may look good if they're earning you know a huge amount of money per month but if they're not profiting much on it then like this one down here for example three dollars and eighty you know do you want to be making three dollars and eighty per sale and also taking a dollar or two out of that to buy a product or do you want to be profiting you know seventy eight dollars per sale it's there's, there's various different things that factor into that I typically will search first thing I will do is break down okay how much as a whole as a category are these people making you know 239,000, 239, 188, 70, 48. I mean, these, these top sellers are making good money. I certainly wouldn't recommend trying to get into phone cases, um, but I just want to show you the tool and how it helps you to go deeper into your research of finding out <clears throat> who you may be competing against, how much they're making, and that kind of stuff. The second tool which really does help with the product research side of things uh, is the Jungle Scout um, app that they have uh, and you can break it down by product, niche and then this is obviously the Chrome extension that I was talking about as well which I just showed you but this one enables you to really drill down so if for example you wanted to sell something in the baby category and you can you can tick or untick as many of these as you like but you can search what category how much uh, you want to make here it will explain to you what each one of them is but you know for example uh, depending on your budget how much you want to be selling them for which is going to be correlated to how much you pay for them from your manufacturer so for example if you want to sell something that's no less than twenty dollars just to ensure that you've got 
a fairly decent profit margin in there but you want to make sure that you're making the net profit you want to make sure that you're making I don't know at least ten dollars per sale you know then you can fill all of these various different fields in uh, do a search I've got no idea what it's going to show here but it will come up with a whole bunch of stuff and really help you to start drilling down into potential this is what I would say is like high level these are potentials you know you can start looking into okay this product here selling for fifty dollars it's fourteen dollars fees Amazon fees on it and they're netting thirty six dollars so depending on how much thing this thing costs they're probably walking away with at least twenty twenty five dollars per sale hence why they're making you know nearly quarter of a million dollars a month selling this so that's the uh, the other tool which I use for the product research and those two combine um, you'll get 90% of what you need to get done to find a really good product done so just going back to the uh, the presentation yeah so here's the the second tool as you can see various different things filled in you can select and deselect uh, whatever it is that you want and it, it, it all comes down to what you want individually some people haven't got a large budget and they want to buy something for two dollars from their manufacturer and they want to sell them for ten dollars and that's fine you know you can you can really drill down here on what it is you specifically want and then go find products that match that the next one is cost of product uh, and as I've put here this varies greatly it really does depend on what it is that you're trying to achieve based on your own individual circumstances you know you're, you'll hear these various different gurus saying buy this buy this volume but if you don't have five thousand dollars to spend then it, it doesn't matter how good the product is and how well it's selling you just simply aren't going to be able to afford to go and buy that you know so this will vary greatly uh, and this is dependent on how much money you've either got or how much money you're willing to put into this as an investment how risk averse are you the next point as I've put here is if you're not looking to spend too much you can easily adjust the price and search criteria on Jungle Scout as I said earlier you really want to just tweak it play around with it you know don't be afraid to change the fields tick boxes untick boxes uh, and just play around with it until you find something that that you feel comfortable with there's there's no point finding a product that you're completely unfamiliar with all the products that I've ever sold I had some previous knowledge on I'm not saying I'm an expert in all of them but I understood them you know if I'm gonna start selling something that I've never even seen in my entire life and I don't understand it's going to be very very difficult for me to write a good description and and to really resonate with the people that do know about that thing and that are looking to buy it and as I've, as I've broken down here if you was to buy two some two dollars per product from your manufacturer in China and then you pay two dollars shipping on that product and two dollars is high it's again that there's a lot of variables with this it depends how big it is, how heavy it is, how much space it takes up in the Amazon warehouse uh, because obviously the larger it is the more they're going to charge you so two dollars that could be it could be 50 cents it could be 25 cents or it could be way more you know I typically as a rule when I've recommended this to people is if you can find something that fits in a shoebox or smaller and obviously isn't too heavy then it's going to definitely be under two dollars but call it two dollars for the product two dollars for shipping and you buy 200 of those you're, you're looking at eight hundred dollars I understand you know eight hundred dollars to some people is a lot of money and they say there's no way I can do that and you know eight hundred dollars to other people as an investment to start a business you have to understand this is a true business eight hundred dollars is not a lot of money to start a business so you know that would be you now have 200 units shipped sitting in a warehouse or multiple warehouses in the US ready to go 
Amazon Seller Central. So this is your back office. This is where you sign in and you create your listings, you upload your pictures, you write your descriptions for the, the product you're trying to sell. Everything, everything that is controlled in the background as a seller. There's two options on this. The first one is free. And if you take the free option, they charge you 99 cents per sale, regardless of how much the thing is that you're selling. You know, so if you're selling something that's five dollars, ten dollars, you know, they're, and they're taking a dollar out of that, you know, it, it's a chunk that's being taken out of it. For me personally, I just I went straight into the professional account, which is the forty dollar a month account, and it, just do the math on it. it. You figure if you're selling more than forty items per month, which obviously you're going to be wanting to do if you just bought 200 of them or 500 of them or whatever. As soon as you, as you exceed 40 sales per month and you're being charged a dollar at a time, you're going to be overpaying anyway. So you're better off just paying the $40 for the professional account, which does allow you some other privileges as well but that the free doesn't. But you're going to be saving money in the long term as well. Okay, logo. This is a really important one. People kind of, the people that I've spoken to get a little bit overwhelmed with this. This is actually one of the easiest things to do and it's really not difficult. You need to have a, a logo created and there's, there's services out there, for example, fiverr.com. I'm sure you know most of you have heard of that and you can go on there and you can have a professional graphic designer create you a logo anywhere from five dollars upwards every single one that i've ever had created i've never paid more than thirty dollars for typically it's from ten to thirty dollars and the turnaround on that can be anywhere from 24 hours to typically three to five days and you the reason you want to get the logo created is because when you're private labeling you're getting a logo and a, a brand name and you're putting that on a product and creating your own private labeled version of that product. So whatever it may end up being, you're creating your own version of that. So you need to have your own logo and your own brand name or some name that you're gonna put on it that uniquely identifies it as your own brand. This, as I've put here, I, I personally highly recommend getting it done professionally. I know people say, oh, well, I could do it in you know, Photoshop or whatever it may be. And if you've got some design and graphic skills, then go ahead and do it. But I value my time more than I do money. And the amount of time it's going to take me to learn Photoshop and then to get on and create something of a high enough quality versus just paying somebody ten dollars to do it and then getting it back to me in a day or two I personally I value the time over the money uh, and I always just get a professional to do it that's what they do they've been doing it for years they're gonna do a better job than me anyway trying to learn Photoshop or whatever it may be and it's ten dollars twenty dollars it's, it's really not uh, a lot of money the next one is the barcode. This is an important one for a couple of reasons. You want the barcode put on the product so once it lands from your courier or from your freight forwarder on Amazon Warehouse's doorstep, they need to be able to scan that and put it in their warehouse. And so the barcode of the physical product that they've got sitting in their warehouse matches up to your listing that you created and this is an important one because a lot of people have been having problems uh, because Amazon kind of changed the rules on this before you used to be able to just put barcodes on there that you could buy online and then Amazon really tightened up their rules on <clears throat> making sure that these barcodes are GS1 so you when you buy these barcodes you have to make sure that they're GS1 if they're not then you will get 200 units or however many you ordered arrive on Amazon's doorstep and they will turn the package away because they have to be GS1 they're very very strict on that so you can still get these GS1 um, barcodes I buy all of mine on uh, eBay you just have to make sure that the seller that's selling them on eBay 
uh, and in the next slide I will show you who I buy them from. But you just have to make sure that that eBay seller is selling GS1 barcodes and they're very very inexpensive as you will see here. I mean you can buy 25 of these barcodes for 99 cents. They're, they're literally just digital PDF files that come through and you will take that file and you will forward it onto your manufacturer and then the manufacturer prints them out and sticks them onto uh, the packaging whether it's a, a poly bag or a box or whatever it may be. And as I bought here it's always worth buying a few extra. I mean at, at 99 cents for 25 you only need one barcode per product. So you know for example if you was to buy, and again, I wouldn't recommend these, but if you was to buy a fidget spinner, the you know the newest, latest, and greatest fidget spinner, you only need one barcode per product. So you only need, if there's variants of it. So for example, if you had a blue fidget spinner and a green fidget spinner and a red fidget spinner, you would need individual barcodes for each ones of those. But typically most products at least if you're doing this for the very first time you probably won't have variants of that product you're just gonna need one unique I don't know for example a whiteboard and the one barcode will go on the packaging of that whiteboard and that's all that you need and here uh, is just an option this is who I buy from personally as you can see here as I stated you know 25 UPC barcodes they state here it's GS1 for 99 cents I mean you just can't go wrong with that that means that you can now sell 25 products unique products on Amazon you know and it cost you 99 cents photography this is a big one and it seems to be highly debated in the community if you want to call it that you know the various different people that have their opinions on these things me personally when I'm looking at an Amazon listing, uh, and it doesn't even have to be an Amazon listing, if, I, if I'm looking through a magazine for a car, it doesn't matter what it is, the picture invariably is what is going to sell me on something. I will look at the picture, something about a certain picture will draw me in and then I will then go read about the details of that thing. So for me, photography has always been a very integral part of it. Uh, and I'm willing to spend the extra money on the photography because I understand there's a lot of people like me that look through things and are drawn in by the picture first and foremost. And if somebody just skips straight over your, you know, your listing because you've got crappy photography and goes and buys from somebody else, why, why do you even have the listing there? You know, it's, to me, it's, it's very, very important. Professional photography... It varies in price. I use a company called productphotography.com and their prices are 30 to $40 per image, which you think initially, wow, that sounds pretty expensive, particularly as you know, on an Amazon listing, you should be trying to fill up all your, your slots. They allow you uh, seven image slots. So you, you should be trying to fill all of those up with seven images, seven different images of your product. You don't have to have them all done professionally, but I would recommend at least probably four. If you're looking through an Amazon listing, particularly if it's on the app, it will show you the main big picture and then underneath some smaller pictures as well. And so you want to make sure those at least the top four are really, really top quality. On this, I've put uh, the product photos are the most important part of the listing. Uh, as I just alluded to a minute ago, and I maintain that, yes, you do need good sales copy. Yes, you need to be selling something that's in demand that people are looking for anyway. But assuming that you're doing all of that correctly and somebody searches on something and then they're presented with a list of pages and pages of the same thing, what is it about your listing that is going to make somebody click on your listing and then ultimately buy? buy your product over other people's and before they even get into the listing and read the description and all of that stuff which is important you, there's a step prior to that and that's getting them to even click on your listing and that's where the photography for me really comes in 
Okay, this one, the, the previous six, I would say are all essential. Seven and eight are, they're not mandatory, but I would highly, highly recommend getting these done. I've experienced it the hard way, and I've experienced it the easy way, and I learn from my lessons. An inspection service, as I said at the beginning of this, you want to make sure that it's an independent inspection service. You don't want the inspectors being biased towards the company that are selling you these things and overlooking things. You want an independent inspection company. Typically, it's there's different options. So for example, my last product that I ordered is the first time ordering from that manufacturer and I ordered 500 units. It can be pretty costly if you get an inspection company to come in and to inspect all 500 but one of the things that they offer is a random inspection typically for about a hundred to two hundred dollars they will go in and they will do a random inspection so out of those 500 units they checked about 50 of them just randomly open boxes you know dig through and just make sure that randomly they're not coming across consistent problems the price does vary on this depending on obviously on how many units you have and there's a few other things uh, one of the problems I had with one of my original manufacturers was I told them that I was going to get the independent inspection service done and then they sealed all the boxes up so th there can be additional problems but typically if you tell them I'm going to have an inspection done expect them on this day you arrange it with the inspection service they will come in and they will just randomly inspect uh, and then they write up a nice report they take pictures they send it back to you. Any problems, they will obviously highlight, and then you can have those addressed. So, for example, with the 500 units I was talking about, about 20 of them were defective. So I had the 480 sent onto Amazon. They remanufactured the, the damaged 20, and then from those 20, they then shipped them about two weeks later. So there's, there's ways to work around it, but had I not done that, or had it been more than 20, all you're going to do is you're going to send them to Amazon. They're going to, somebody's going to buy them. They're going to, Amazon are going to ship it out because they don't know it's defective. And then the person that's bought it is going to end up getting pissed off, leaving you a bad re review, sending the thing back, and then you have to refund them anyway. And it still ends up costing you money. You know, so you figure even on 20 units, if they had been returned was that worth me paying the hundred dollars or two hundred dollars to get the inspection done in my opinion it's it's well worth it uh, and also as i've put here on the third point alibaba which is if you don't know one of the probably the biggest marketplaces for you to go and search out the products so once you've done your product research you find whatever it is that you think is going to be a good opportunity to sell on amazon and then you go find it on Alibaba and start contacting the suppliers. And Alibaba will actually, once you decide on a supplier, at certain times of the year, I got it done uh, last summer, they will actually offer an inspection service for free, which I took advantage of. And it was exactly the same as all the other ones I've ever paid for. The only difference is, you know, in that example, I didn't have to pay for it. And last but certainly not least, Amazon's pay-per-click that they offer. So once you've got your product listed, the products have arrived at the warehouse and they're ready to go. You've got a live listing that people can search on and find and everything. They offer pay-per-click advertising and I'm sure you've all seen it, you know, whether it's on the right-hand side of the screen or sometimes at the top of the screen there will be sponsored ads there and you can basically pay you know your your product listing because it's so new it might be on the 10th page or something and people are never going to find it but you can pay to have it put at the top or on the side of the screen which enables people to see it which enables people to buy it and then you start getting organic sales coming in which helps you to rank and then you'll find that where you were on the 10th page you're now on the, the eighth page and the sixth page and, and you start jumping up pretty quickly. This it varies hugely in price depending on what category you happen to be in, you know, depending on what the product is that you're selling, what the, the parent category 
of that is. So for example, if you were selling baby clothes, you know, the parent company, uh, parent category for that is going to be baby. And if you're selling video games, you know, it's going to be video games. So depending on what the demand is and how competitive that category is hugely influences how much you're going to be paying per click. I have paid anywhere from five cents through to three to four dollars in some cases if I'm really trying to push something. But as long as the profit is there, it's not a problem to do that. You know, if you're going to pay, if you're going to be making ten dollars every time you sell a product and you have to pay 30 cents to put that in front of people's eyeballs for them to then click on it for them to then buy it for you to then ultimately get the sale you're pro profiting you know what would that be nine dollars seventy cents and you're paying them thirty dollars for the privilege of them showing it to people to the consumers so again that to me is worth doing at the bare minimum you want to be probably doing it for the first month or so you know when you're you're straight out the gate you're a brand new product sitting on the 10th page 20 page whatever it may be you want to be getting your product in front of people to launch it in the in the beginning i always even now having the experience that i do i always start off with a five dollar a day budget and i just play around with the bid amounts so for example i will say I'm willing to spend 30 cents for every time somebody clicks on my ad. Obviously with the hope of them buying it, they're not going to buy it every time. And dependent on what that 30 cents gets me, I will then play around with, okay, maybe I can reduce it down a little bit or maybe I can increase it. And in some cases that 30 cents will still only get you on the second page of paid advertisements so you might have to increase it up to 40 or 50 cents or whatever and then you'll find oh okay now I'm on the first page now they're displaying my ads on the first page so that's a little bit of trial and error but five dollars a day that's that's a good starting point it's not going to break the bank and you can it, there's enough money there to start playing around with it and to, to get you onto the first page getting organic sales and then starting to rank you're starting to rank from the 10th page to the 8th to the 6th and, and upwards. Okay, so here's a like a final breakdown of all the various different things uh, that I've just covered and a, a, a grand total. As I said earlier, you know, some of these amounts, $800, $1,400, to some people that might seem too much. To other people, they may be surprised at how little it costs to start a real business and this this is not a get rich quick scheme this you're starting a real business you're in you're investing in inventory and you're going to be selling it on the world's largest marketplace you know so here you can see $97 one-time payment for the jungle scout chrome extension that was the one that I showed you in the very beginning you click on the Chrome extension and then it pulls all the information $29 a month for the web app that's the one that I showed you where you can play around with the figures and you know really kind of tweak and refine it to what you want it to be based on your own criteria of of how much you're willing to put in to start the business eight hundred dollars that's two dollars per unit two dollars shipping times two hundred so now you've got two hundred units ready to go you're spending four dollars and maybe you're making ten dollars so two hundred units times ten dollars profit you put in fourteen hundred dollars but you're walking you're then being repaid that fourteen hundred dollars back again plus walking away with an additional two thousand dollars or you know whatever it may be where else can you get those kind of returns you're talking a hundred two hundred percent roi in a lot of cases forty dollars a month for the amazon seller central account as i explained earlier you don't need to do that right out the gate but i personally would if you can afford to do it I would. 10 to $30 for a logo, you, you'll be able to get one as cheap as $5. So I've put it in here as 10. Uh, if you're willing to wait a little bit longer, you know, wait three to five days for them to get it back to you, you can typically get it at a lower price as opposed to paying 30 to get it back to you in 24 hours. And there's no need to rush. 
You know, if you can think of a brand name and, and get a logo created around that, you don't need it back to you in 24 hours. You know, you haven't even, at this point, you haven't even got a product to put the logo onto. Barcodes, as I said, you know, 99 cents. It's not going to break the bank. Uh, and that's for 25 of them as well. <clears throat> I've put in $200 here for the professional photography. That, you could remove it if you're a photographer or you know a photographer that can get it done for you. And in the same respect, if you get all seven images done professionally, it's going to be more than that. That That is a somewhat of a variable. But 200 is a a solid amount to get at least four to five professional level photos done that you can put on your listing and and really make it look top-notch the hundred dollar inspection as I explained earlier you know that's that's self-explanatory well worth doing uh, and then the PPC you know as I said five dollars a day for the first month 30 days hundred and fifty dollars uh, and that's going to then start getting you the organic sales which you want to be selling to be making the money back. So for a grand total of $1,426, so for the $1,426, you've now got 200 units in the Amazon warehouse ready to go with GS1 barcodes, uh, professional photography, a really good looking listing, and you're also paying $5 per day for that listing to be shown to people that are searching for that particular thing you know so for fourteen hundred dollars you can start a real business and within 30 days you could have sold those 200 units my very first product I ever ordered I ordered 200 of them and I sold out in two weeks I sold way quicker than I was anticipating and quadrupled my money that I had put in within a two week period you know so the you may think that the fourteen hundred dollars sounds a lot but if you understand that in two weeks or in four weeks you could have double that triple that quadruple that is it worth putting the money in for me personally i think it is so anyway i hope you've enjoyed the uh the presentation it went on a little bit longer than i wanted it to but i really wanted to explain this to absolute beginners i know how I felt a couple of years ago when I started and I heard Amazon FBA and that was really I just I had no idea of of what it was and how it worked and I certainly didn't understand a lot of these things until I came across them I understood that I needed photography but <clears throat> until I actually started contacting photographers and I was like Wow, I didn't realize it was going to cost that much. I didn't understand a lot of these things until I came to that point of the journey. So I just wanted to give this as a, as a complete breakdown so you can make an educated decision as to whether you want to get into this or not. And if you do, every step of the way you already know what to anticipate and how much to plan, planning your budgets so you know that you've got enough every step of the way. Because although it's $1,400, you don't need that all in one hit. This, this whole process of doing the product research and then contacting the suppliers, ordering the products, you know, all of that is probably a, a two month process, two to three month process. By the time, typically when you order the products, they'll ask for 30% up front, then make the products for you. And then once they've made them all for you, then you have to pay the 70%, which obviously, you know, you want to be getting the inspection done before you pay them the, the large chunk, the 70%. So that $1,400, if you was looking to break it out into three months, it's a lot less difficult to find that money if you're struggling somewhat. Break it down into thirds and then go order the, the Jungle Scout tools. Start just researching and then once you find something or a couple of options that you think yeah th this looks really good I'm going to now start contacting suppliers you're probably going to be into month two so now you've got some money to actually go and place the order or the 30% at least on the the units f to get them started manufacturing them you know so $1400 I would say if you can find yourself $1,400, you can do everything the way it should be done, getting it all done professionally. You're not going to be skipping things or 
you know kind of doing things not to the top quality um, because ultimately you want the best possible product the best possible listing the best possible photos within that listing to give you the best chance of selling them as quickly as possible so I hope you enjoyed the uh, the presentation and I enjoyed explaining it for you thank you